Hello, I'm JW. Well, this time we're looking at lighting circuits again, and on this one we're going to have a look at switching, particularly as in where you can have one, two, or even more switches controlling the same light. Now, as we saw in the previous episode, the basic switch for a light has two terminals, something like that, and then there's a movable contact between them. So when they're in the off position, the two terminals are not connected, and then when they're in the on position, what happens is that the metal contact moves across inside and it links the two terminals together. And for this reason, all you've got here is the line coming in and then the line going out and returning back to the usually ceiling rows or whatever you have in the middle of the room. So there's no neutrals involved there. And it's simply the fact that the line comes from the light fitting, diverts via the switch and then returns to the light fitting. And of course, if these happen to be connected together, then of course power can uh, continue through and the light turned on. But of course, when the light is uh, turned off or the switch is in the off position, then the contact's over here. So of course, there's no actual connection through there. And if you haven't seen the previous episode, then of course, uh, links to that are in the usual place. Now, in terms of adding an extra switch or more than one switch, then the uh, connections at this end are going to be pretty much the same. You're still going to have the line coming in with the actual power and then the switched line which goes back to the light fitting or whatever you've got in the centre of the room. All that's going to change is the type of switch itself and of course we're going to be adding an extra switch or maybe more than one further down the line so you can control the light from two or more positions. So first of all let's have a look at the different types of switch which you can obtain and of course you would normally be using. Now as we saw there, the uh, basic switch just has the two terminals and then inside there's a movable contact which is either in the off position there or in the closed position again it just joins the two pieces together. And this is called a one-way switch. Now note if you live in America or other countries these switches will have totally different names but these are names as used in the UK. If you live elsewhere then obviously things will be different. And so this switch is only good enough for just using one switch on its own. Simply it's an on and off connection. Now the second type of switch, which would be used if you're having more than one switch on a circuit, has the uh, single contacts at the top here again. And as with this one, it has the uh, movable contact inside. But the difference here is at the bottom, it has two contacts. So uh, one here and one here. And in one position, these two are connected together and then when you move the switch to the other position these two are connected together. So this one here is generally called the common or C terminal and then you've got two possible outputs so either common and number one or common and number two and uh, this is called a two-way switch And this is because, of course, it has uh, two positions, so uh, position one and position two. And note that uh, in any circumstance, these two are never connected together. It's only these two or these two, depending on the position of the switch itself. Now, this is actually by far the most common type of switch available. And, of course, you can use one of these switches here just as a normal on and off switch, just by connecting between, say, the common terminal and the one at the bottom there and of course just ignoring that one as if it wasn't there because basically it's going to do exactly the same as this. It's just uh, you've got that extra terminal there if you wish to use it for positions with two or more switches. Now the third type of switch uh, which is far less common is only used if you wanted to have a single light controlled from three or more positions. So you can imagine that's a uh, fairly unlikely scenario but uh, nevertheless it does exist. And uh, what this is, is essentially two of these combined into the same unit and sort of overlaid in a rather strange fashion. And uh, these have four terminals, so I'll have two here and two here. Now these are called intermediates. So uh, intermediate switch. And uh, again, these have two positions, which uh, in one position, this terminal is connected here and at the same time this one is connected here. Now when you actually move the switch to the other position what happens is that this piece here moves across over there and this piece moves across over here. So that's one position, 
But then in the other position, what you get is this. So essentially, it's crossing over the two wires that come in. So it's either straight through on both, or it's coming in and diverting over here, and coming in and then diverting over here. And so this is really two of these sort of overlaid in a fashion, because you've got two contacts which move between the two parts. And of course, they both move when you press the switch into one or the other of the positions. Now, terminals on these do vary quite a bit. On some, it's just one, two, three, four, or you might have one and one and two and two, or various other combinations, but uh, it doesn't particularly matter as long as it's uh, identifiable which is which. And again, as with the uh, two way switch here, you can use this as just a two way switch by basically just using three of the terminals. And you can also use one of those as just a normal one way or on and off switch. Again, by just only using two of the terminals. So let's have a look at some of the actual wiring. And uh, by far the most common, of course, is to have a single light, and that's controlled from two separate switches. This is the sort of thing you might have on a set of stairs, so one switch at the bottom and one at the top, or possibly a long hallway or something similar. So uh, first of all, from the uh, rest of the circuit, you're going to have the two wires, so you're going to have your line with the power there, and of course the uh, switched line, which is what takes the power back to the light fitting. And the uh, point here is that uh, to turn the light on, all we need to do is basically connect these together in some fashion, and to turn the light off, we just need to make sure that they are not connected together. And of course the basic switch is uh, just going to connect those or not, as we've seen previously. Now for two separate switches, both of the switches need to be of the two-way variety, which we just saw, and that's the one with the three terminals. So uh, we'll just draw those switches uh, in here. So terminals one, two, and three. And then of course we need another switch at some other location, and that will be the same variety. Again, the two-way type with the three terminals inside. And uh, we're just drawing the contact inside, so say it's in the uh, position here at the moment, and also in the position here. And when we move the switch, it's going to move from here to down here, or from here to here. Now, in all of these switches to actually do anything, they of course do need to be connected together, and also connected to the incoming wires. So the first thing we can do is to connect the two base terminals here to each of the two switches. So it's basically just two wires connecting those together. Now, there's several ways that this can actually be done. And uh, the first way is something you might normally use, say, in a conduit type of installation, where you would actually have individual wires. And uh, these two in the middle will always be connected in this fashion. But we can take the line in, as in this is the power coming in from the fuse box or whatever, and we can take that straight into the terminal on the first switch. And uh, unsurprisingly, we're then left with a single terminal over here, and this is the one which would actually go back to the light itself. So we can take a wire from here, and again we can bring that all the way around and back to the actual light there. So what we've got here then is that the light at the moment is switched on. So the power's coming in here, through the switch contact, along this uh, top wire, through the other switch contact, and back onto the wire here, and of course back to the light. So these two are now connected together via the two switches. Now if we move one of the switches, let's say this one, we can move it to here, then the light is now off because uh, there's no connection between here and here. We've got this one just going through to this switch here, but again, it doesn't actually go any further. And the uh, switch line, of course, is actually connected back here, but again, so there's no connection between either. However, we can move the other switch now to the other position. And now the light's on again because, again, the path goes all the way through and back and back to this one. And of course, we can then move this switch over here, and that goes to the uh, position there now. And again, the light's off because, uh, once again, there's no connection between the two wires at this side. So this has achieved what we actually wanted. We can turn the lights on and off from either switch, and the arrangement doesn't actually depend on one of the switches being on for the other to work. It's literally on and off here, and on and off over here. Now, so this is the sort of method you would normally use in, let's say, conduit with single wires. You can use this with a uh, triple and earth type of cable. Essentially, the cable here would be your three cores there, and there'd also be an earth included, which we're not showing here. But of course, it does mean at the end here, 
then you would have to have some additional connections because inside the box at the back of the switch you're going to have this wire here so you'd have to make some kind of joint here because this would come in from the rest of the wiring and then of course your three terminals for this one will be here here and here so although you can use that with the three core and earth type of wire it's not uh, particularly commonly used because of course you do need this extra terminal to be provided in the back box or whatever connection you have there but uh, at this end it's just literally three wires with three terminals. You do of course need to make sure that the wires are connected in the correct terminals. If not, then what you can end up with is various unusual combinations whereby this switch only works if this one is in a particular position, or one of them doesn't work at all, and so on. So of course you do need to make sure they are connected as shown. Now another method which again uses the exact same switches, so uh, just put those uh, switches back in. Now this uses the uh, three core and earth cable that uh, you would typically use in a house or something. And uh, this particular arrangement is usually called the conversion method because it's the easiest one to do if you've already got just a single switch and then you want to add the other switch uh, further down. So as before we've got the two wires coming in here, the live power and then the switch line going back to the light fitting. But the uh, arrangement here is slightly different. So you've basically got a three core cable and this connects both switches together to the corresponding terminal on the other switch. So again, the two uh, here go to there. And then this one actually connects all the way through to over there. So what we've got here is essentially a single cable with the three cores inside. And you've just connected each terminal of this switch to the same corresponding terminals of the other switch. And as before, inside the switch, you can have the movable contact. So we'll say it's in uh, this position and uh, this position to start with. Now the line and the switch line in connect to the first switch, but it's somewhat different to that we had before. They do not connect here, because otherwise it wouldn't actually get anywhere over this side. So what happens is the line connects in here, and then the switch line actually comes out of this one, and that's what goes back to the light. This has the benefit over the previous method that uh, you don't need any additional connections in here. You're just simply using the three terminals that are provided on the switch itself. And of course, as before, you would have an earth connection going to the box here, and of course the one over there as well. Now, just as with the other method, the uh, switches can work independently of each other. And in the situation we've got here, then the light is not turned on, it's actually off, because uh, the power's coming in here, and because of the position of this switch, both of these wires here are now live, and also this one as well, but there's no connection between here and of course the switch live, which is coming out on this lower terminal. So if we move one of the switches, say this one over here, that will now move to this position. And the light's now on because the uh, line coming in here, both of these have power on them, which means this does, and then that can now return via the third wire at the bottom, and the light is uh, actually turned on. However, of course we can move this one, and that goes to the position here and now again the lights turned off because uh, line coming in on these two terminals but these are not connected to anything so again it uh, doesn't actually switch the light on and if you move this one back to its previous position then now the lights on so power's coming in here this way and back along here and of course back to the light at the other end so it works in pretty much the same way as the previous one maybe less obvious from the uh, arrangement of the wires here. Again, all you're doing is just either connecting these two together via some combination of wires or not connecting them together to enable the light to be switched on and off. Now what about the situation where you want three switches to control the same light? Well, uh, it starts out with pretty much what we've seen before. So let's do our two switches here. Three terminals. And at the other end, we're going to have one of those again, so again the three terminals. And we'll put the wiring in with the sort of conduit type method as we saw initially, so essentially that's line going in to the top here and coming out of the other switch far away and coming back to the light over here. And as before we're going to have our contact inside the switch, so connecting these two and say those two. And just as before you can have the wires uh, connecting the bottom terminals of each switch together, so it's going straight across. 
Now this is what we saw before, so essentially the light is in the on position there, and if you move one of these then it's in the off, and then it goes on again, and so on. Now the intermediate switch, which we saw previously has the four terminals, is actually fitted in the middle, and this is why it's called an intermediate switch, as it's basically between the other two. So in order to install this, what we need to do is to uh, break into the wiring in the middle here, and then we can fit the intermediate switch in here. So there's our intermediate switch, and as we saw at the beginning, it's got four terminals. And the four wires, of course, go straight into those four terminals like that. Now in one position, the terminals in the switch are connected like this. So in that position there, really nothing's actually changed. It's exactly the same as before. We just happen to have a switch here instead of solid wiring. So in this position, the light is still on because power coming in, going through, and coming out the other end. And if you move either one of these, then the light is turned off. It's because you're breaking that connection at some point. And if you move both of them to the bottom position, then again, the light is on once more. Now the intermediate switch will do the same thing, either turning light on or off, and again, depending on the position of the others. So at the moment, we've got the light on. So when we actually activate the uh, intermediate switch here, instead of them being connected like this, they'll actually be connected like this. And now the light is turned off because uh, if we start here, power's coming in here, through here, but it's basically crossing over to the bottom one here, and of course it's not going anywhere because that's not connected. However, we could move this one to here, and now the light's on again because power coming in through here, going down to the bottom, and then out from there. And if we left those at the top there, by moving this one we can achieve the same thing. So moving down to here, so now power comes in the bottom, goes at the top and out and back here, and of course the light is now turned on. And as for the uh, intermediate switch suggests, we can switch it off here as well. So the light's now on with power coming through and being diverted there and back here. But if we uh, move the switch here to the other position, we'll now have the pair connected like this. And again, now we're off because power's coming in, not going anywhere. But we can still move either one of these into another position, which will switch the light on again, because that will take power through the top. Or again, this moving to the bottom will connect through at the bottom. So we've achieved what we wanted. You can actually turn this single light on or off from either one of the three positions. And it doesn't matter which position each light is in, regardless of where the other two are, the third one will always switch the light to the opposite set. So if it's already on, it will be turning it off, and if it's off, it will always be turning it back on again. And if you wanted to have some unusual circumstance where you wanted to have, say, four switches controlling the same light, then all you've got to do is just add in another one of these intermediate switches. So you could add that in here, and again inside it would have those same four terminals, and those would either be connected together across the top, or again across on the diagonal. And in fact you could even add another one in here in exactly the same way. Now we'll just put that say in the other position like that. And you can actually add as many of these as you want. You could have sort of 50 intermediate switches all in a big line with one of the two-way things at either end. And then you can turn your light on from 52 different switches. Now it's pretty unlikely anybody would want that, but electrically perfectly possible no reason why you couldn't. And uh, again, it's just a question of following the path through. So in this position here, power's coming in here, going via the switch here, through into this one, crossing over to the other side, through this one here, through the top here, and out the back here into there. So at the moment the light's on, but if you move any one of these five switches, it's going to make the uh, power go to the other terminal here, and therefore the light is off. And then it's basically on and off from all five in any combination you want. Now, so this is normally arranged with a conduit situation where you've only got the two wires between the various switches. And as long as you get the two incoming wires at one end of the switch and the two outgoing at the other end, then not going to be a problem. So let's just have a look at this again, but with the uh, three core and earth type of arrangement. So this is again what we saw previously. So uh, you've got a three core cable connecting the two switches together. And it's just one terminal going to the corresponding one in the other switch. 
And then your power coming in goes to one of the bottom terminals and the power coming back out is on the other one. So that's what we saw previously. And again, in this particular position, the light is off because power's here, doesn't go anywhere. And again, moving this one up here will bring the power back this way and moving this up there will again bring the power just via this switch at this end. Now to add the intermediate, it's very similar to before, but the important thing to notice is that this, the intermediate switch has four terminals. But if we were just to cut in here, then we'd actually end up with six because we've got three individual cores. So uh, let's just uh, remove a suitable space there in the middle. And again, we can draw our intermediate switch in here. And again, as before, we're going to have those four terminals inside. Now, the important thing here is to make sure you're connecting the correct wires. And the wires you want are the ones from the two, basically one and two terminals on the switch. The common terminal, or one in the middle here, does not connect to the intermediate switch at all. So we're just going to connect these wires in here and in here. And as we saw previously, it's quite likely that the switch could be in this position, or of course in the crossed over arrangement. And this is pretty much what we saw in the previous example with the conduit type of wiring. So then the question remains is what to do with this one. And the answer is it doesn't connect to the switch at all. All we're going to do is simply connect this to a separate terminal in the back of this switch box. So it's just continuing straight through uninterrupted. Now this does mean that if you're going to fit a switch on the wall, you're going to have to actually provide this terminal in the back of the box. But uh, nevertheless, it's just again connecting this one to this one. It's just remaining connected all the time. And as before, if we've got the switch in this position here, then the light is off because power's coming in, not really going anywhere. If this jet switch changes over to the other position, which will be like this, then power's coming in via the switch here, back to the terminal, through the individually separately connected wire, back here, and again out to the light, and it's obviously turned on in that situation. And just as before, if you move either one of these, so this to here, then again you've changed the circuit so the light is off, and you can do the same with this one. And just as with the other one, if you wanted to add an extra switch in here, then you can. But again, it's just remembering that you're only connecting the two outer wires to the switch. The central common wire is just looped through and does not connect to the switch at all. Now this is probably the more common one, certainly in a house, because this here will be your three core and earth cable. And again, we haven't shown the earth here, but of course that would go through to all of the different switch positions. However, if you're going to do these, it's absolutely essential to identify which one is the one connected to the common terminal of the two end switches, because if you get it wrong, then it's simply not going to work properly or at all. And the common one is, has to be connected straight through. It does not connect to the intermediate switch at all. And of course, you also need to make sure that the common here is connected to the common terminal at the switch at the end, because again, if it isn't, it's not going to work properly. You know, all kinds of weird situations where you turn the light on at one place and then it doesn't work from the other, and so on. Now, I'll just change to the paper here, and this is about colours of the various wires. Now, as we've seen before, if you're going to use two core you know, cabling, then it's likely to contain the brown and, of course, the uh, blue cores inside, certainly if it's the more modern variety. And of course previously to this uh, being used, the older colours for the same things, blue was previously black, and brown was previously red. Some people might say that's a much better combination of colours. But nevertheless, you can't buy this cabling anymore, but there's still piles of it in store because the brown and blue has only been in use for about 10 years. So you'll probably find plenty of old uh, red and black cabling out there. And as we saw previously, if you're going to use uh, this for the cable that goes to the switch, then it's not actually a neutral inside, it's actually the line, which would normally be the red or brown, and switched line, which uh, normally should be identified using a piece of sleeving. So in the case of black, it would have red sleeve over it, and obviously the brown sleeve over the blue one. And so you can buy the twin brown, and previously you could of course buy the twin red, although that was fairly uncommon. So that's your uh, two-core cable. 
Now when it comes to a three core cable, as we'd use with those uh, two or more switches for the same light, then these of course have uh, three differently coloured cores inside. Now the previous colours as used with this system here were red, blue, and the third one was yellow. And just as with the uh, using the twin cable for the switching cable, all of these are actually uh, lines, there's no neutrals involved, so the red would just of course be red, blue would have a red sleeving over it, and the yellow would also have the red sleeve as well. So at the end of the wire you would essentially have your red wire coming along, the blue one coming along with its appropriate piece of red sleeving over, and the yellow one, all in the same cable of course, and the yellow one would have its piece of red sleeving over as well. And you can either use sleeving that just slips over or possibly use uh, red installation tape if you wanted. So these were the uh, older colours here, so uh, that's uh, again what we might find in an older installation. Again it's not been used for sort of 10 years or so, but again there's probably millions of installations out there with still the old colour cabling still in use. And there's no reason to replace it because cable that's say only 10 years old probably still has uh, many decades of life left on it. So these are what you call the uh, old colours. Now the new one of course uh, isn't red, blue and yellow anymore. How surprising. So here's your new and not necessarily better colours. So the three core equivalent now, instead of red it's actually brown. The blue isn't blue of course anymore, it's actually black. And the yellow isn't yellow, it's actually grey, so we'll just use this worn out uh, other pen here, which is sort of grey in a fashion. And just as before you would have a brown sleeve here, and another one here. And when your wires actually arrived at the uh, box or whatever it is you're using, of course the brown one would simply come along just as is. The black one would come along and then have its brown sleeving over the end like that. And the grey one, which is this busted old pen here, which isn't very grey, it would be there, and then you'd have your brown sleeving over it like this. Now you may be able to see a problem with this in that uh, brown, black and grey look surprisingly similar, especially when they're in a thin section like this, and even more so when they're in a dimly lit switch box or something where the lights aren't working, because of course you've turned the power off to the light, so you can't actually use them to light the place up. Nevertheless, those are the colours that are used, like it or not. And uh, again, the brown sleeving could just be brown tape or whatever if you wanted to use that, but uh, obviously the uh, sleeving is a bit tidier as the tape to kind of go a bit sticky and uh, make a bit of a mess. So those are the colours you're going to find. Unfortunately, uh, unlike the twin brown, you can't actually buy this in twin or triple brown. In theory it should be available, but uh, basically it isn't. And no doubt someone can go and find somewhere somewhere, but uh, it's going to be the brown, black and grey with bits of sleeving stuck over the end. And uh, in terms of wiring it to the switches, it doesn't really matter which colour you use, because again all these are lines, there's no neutrals or anything here, as long as you get the same connections at each end. So if you're going to use the say brown one or the red one connecting to the common terminal, again it's got to connect to the common terminal on the other switch as well, and that's the one that would not connect to an intermediate switch, that just goes straight through to the end of the circuit where the other two-way switch is located. Now there's one other colour of cable which you hopefully won't see, I have seen it in a few installations, and it's similar to the red, blue and the yellow, except the cores are red, blue and white. And uh, this was used for a short period before the yellow was introduced. If you see any of that it's at least 50 years old, so really it should have been replaced by now, but uh, nevertheless red, blue and white did exist, and no doubt a few bits of it do exist out there somewhere, but again it's the same deal, red, blue and white, 
and you have the red sleeving to identify them as uh, switch lines or lines over the ends. So that's how you wire up a light to be operated from two or more places. And the uh, two-way switches are by far the most commonly available. And you'd use one of those at each end with the two or three wires connecting between. And the intermediates can be used, but uh, they're fairly uncommon because it's not desperately likely you're going to want to have a single light controlled from three or more positions. But nevertheless, such uh, things do exist, so uh, maybe useful in some situations. And as for the colours there, well, of course they were red and black and uh, red, blue and yellow once, but those colours have long gone. Now been replaced with uh, dull brown, grey and black, all of which look surprisingly similar. And another note there with the colours is that on older three-phase circuits, uh, the uh, red, blue and yellow used to identify the three different phases. And of course blue is now supposed to be neutral, so mix those up in a cabinet and there's usually a big bang and uh, power to the entire building is destroyed and doesn't work anymore. But of course that's all in the name of safety and improvement. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.